A very warm welcome to NTV Weekend Edition. It is Friday the 19th of August 2012. The weekend starts here. Tonight, an emotional homecoming for the Ugandan soldiers who miraculously survived after three Ugandan choppers crashed on Sunday. And help at last for 20-year-old Hamisi Chibirije, whose desperate plight NTV profiled just a few weeks ago. All this and so much more coming your way tonight. Let's begin with the main headlines. Lucky to be alive, the soldiers who miraculously survived Sunday's helicopter crash in Kenya relieve their ordeal as they return home. Some outspoken members of parliament are calling on the president to disband the recently constituted commission of inquiry over Uganda's crash choppers and be replaced with what they call an independent commission. I am Chris Chamringa to bring you that story. Timing. Traders say is the reason why this year's Eid celebration will not make as much money for them, citing the new school term which is about to start and the general law aggregate demand in the economy. I'm Samuel Setumba to bring you this story. Uganda's Olympic gold medalist Stephen Kiprotich has today been appointed a British Council Ambassador. Join me Suhail Mugavi for the details of this story in our weekend edition.
Once again, welcome to NTV Weekend Edition. I am Josephine Karunji. An 11-man UPDF Air Force crew this morning returned home after three Ugandan choppers crashed on Sunday, claiming the lives of seven of their colleagues in Kenya. The crew were welcomed by the Minister of Defense, General J.J. Odongo, and Air Force Chief Commander Major General Jim Wesijire. Wesijire lashed out at allegations that the helicopters that crashed were not airworthy and that the pilots lacked experience. He assured the crew that the job is not yet done and they must maintain focus on the ongoing mission of liberating Somalia. Sylvia Hanga reports. 28 men ready to serve the country left for Somalia last week, but now only 21 of them are alive and 11 are so far back home. These ones indeed consider themselves to be the lucky ones. It was a joyous moment for these after surviving a terrible multiple helicopter crash in the forest of Mount Kenya on Sunday, which killed seven of their counterparts. They were heading to Somalia ready to face their enemy, the Al-Shabaab terrorist group that continues to destabilize the Horn of Africa. It is unbelievable to them that they are back perhaps due to the nature of the environment of Mount Kenya, where it is believed Kenya alone has lost 15 choppers. They were welcomed by their family members, the Minister of Defense, Air Force Commander Major General Jim Owesigiri, and other dignitaries. Actually, I'm very happy that my husband is alive. Also, there is some more sad news of the other member who passed away. But Owesigiri hit out at the rumors, building over the cause of the crash. There have been allegations that the choppers were not airworthy even before the investigations into the cause of the crash are complete. The Air Force commander says Uganda still has one of the strongest Air Force contingents on the continent. If somebody wants to know that we don't have junk aircrafts, let him go to the bush and we will see how we spit fire. But still unfazed, these men are likely to go back and complete the job they started. Gentlemen, the struggle still continues. Aruta continues. We have to fight and liberate Somalia and Africa. Nobody is going. To, there is no retreat, no surrender. I can assure you that the determination, the zeal, and the will to continue and succeed remains as strong as it was from the very beginning. The return of the survivors of the crash is celebrated by so many Ugandans but in the guilt of high expectations from the public as the fight against the Al-Shabaab in Somalia continues. But one question that remains unanswered is what caused the crash? Those are some of the questions we will be discussing and trying to answer. The song that was sung in remembrance of the NRA fighters that lost their lives during the struggle blared in the background, but the names of those that perished in the crash continue to linger in the minds of their colleagues and family members as the army prepares to bring their bodies for burial. But will the families of the departed colleagues receive compensation? Now that is a question that I will not be able to answer this material time. There are mixed feelings for now as the families of those that died continue to mourn. Sudil Biarhanga, NTV. Now after three Ugandan choppers crashed on Sunday in central Kenya, sharp criticism has emerged from some vocal members of parliament who are calling for a complete review of Uganda's involvement in the African Union mission in Somalia. The outspoken MPs from across the political divide have called upon President Museveni to disband the Army Board of Inquiry that was recently set up to investigate the crash. Chris Chamenga reports. The disaster that struck three of Uganda's attack helicopters in central Kenya last Sunday has caused public outcry from some vocal legislators who are demanding a change in the way the catastrophe is being handled. We saw the military establishment in the country flagging off in full view of, of, of the cameras. Here we are, we are sending a squadron to finish Al-Shabaab. But at the end of the day, we as a country are in total loss. Army officials say the three Russian-made Mi-24 helicopters crashed due to bad weather but have nonetheless established a commission of inquiry led by General Salim Saleh to investigate the cause of the mishap. But this development has rubbed the MPs the wrong way. So why is the President Museven taking the inquiry in a casual manner? 
if there is this on record, people who are involved in the purchase of the same in the first place, you send them to investigate the same? Geno Saleh is just an infantry general, and we think he does not have the requisite uh, knowledge to conduct a commission of that magnitude. The lawmakers further questioned the justification of the continued existence of Uganda's troops in Somalia given the losses the country has incurred. Why should we pump all these resources in Somalia when women in a Malago hospital cannot even have a bed where to sleep when they are producing? The chopper disaster has occurred seven years after a Ugandan presidential helicopter carrying the late Sudanese Vice President Dr. John Garang crashed in a mountain range in South Sudan. Chris Ochamringa, NTV. Thank you, Chris. Now, well, using that issue that we engage you tonight in our NTV Weekend Poll, and tonight we are asking, do you agree with some legislators that the Commission of Inquiry set up to investigate the helicopter crash is not independent? I repeat, do you agree with some legislators that the Commission of Inquiry set up to investigate the helicopter crash is not independent? To have your say, text 8778, followed by your name and where you are texting from. We shall be reading some of your comments during tonight's newscast. We're well, moving on and government has given an ultimatum to residents settled on a forest reserve on Buvuma Island to vacate or face eviction. The encroachers, however, say they have lived off the land for over two decades and are not willing to leave, instead accusing the state of conniving with a palm oil company to take over the area. About five years ago, government faced a lot of criticism for allocating 10,000 hectares of land in Bugala Island for a fast palm oil project in the country. Residents of Katiko village on Buvuma Island are crying foul over a government plan to evict them from a forest reserve. They claim they have lived on for years. National Forestry Authority, NFA, together with the Ministry of Water and Environment, have launched a campaign to protect whatever forest cover there is left on the island, but this has not gone down well with the majority of the locals on it. In Guzet, we have produced children over where I am now. Forest is coming to tell me you are in the forest. Project Mutu Yamba, government here for not spending all of what it can. It puts physical demarcations. However, State Minister for Environment Flavia Munari says the move is in the end for the benefit of the community on the island and they instead should be supportive of it. The government cares for these people. The reason why we are telling them to get out of the forest is because we care for them. If we don't do anything about it, the land will no longer hold us. We are becoming too many, while the land remains the same. The area resident district commissioner echoed the minister's position, saying forests are protected. First of all, we sense is the people to teach them that this is a protected area. Forest reserves, the central forest reserves especially, men have been encroached upon. And they have been encroached upon because of population pressure, especially from the Soga side. He, however, added that the grace period given for the relocation should also be revisited. If these people have taken a very long time to settle in the forest, we can't talk about flushing them all of a sudden. So the ultimatum that was given, according to me as the RDC, it should be revised. This comes as up to 10,000 hectares of land comprising mostly of thick natural forest on Buvuma Island is to be raised to give way for the extension of the controversial palm oil plantation by Bidco. Last week, Lands Minister Daudi Migereko said the government has agreed to allocate 65,000 hectares of public land in Buvuma to Oil Palm Uganda Limited, the Uganda government company managed by Bidco. Well, for six years now, he has been battling a debilitating disease that has been eating away at his private parts as his family looked on and able to raise money to save her Missy Chibidije. But his misfortunes could now be turning out for the better after NTV profiled his ordeal. And now well-wishers, including Housing Finance Bank and music artists, have come to his aid.
after six years of pain and the uncertainty of recovering, 20-year-old Hamisi Kibirige is now scheduled for an operation at Kibuli Muslim Hospital. Bedridden for years from a disease that created a large ulcer in his private parts, his family sought the help of the media, including NTV Uganda. Now that effort appears to be paying off. I decided to use my position as a broadcaster uh, to assist him by calling on to my friends and my listeners. And I'm happy that uh, they've contributed all that they could to see that we carry him here. And what I've been sourcing is money. And, I'm, and uh, we've been able to raise part of the money that is needed. And, uh, but right now what we've raised is to take him to the theater and the first deposit of admission. Hamisi's grandmother says his ailment started way back in 2007. However, despite efforts to get medical help from various hospitals, including Uganda's National Referral Hospital, Mulago, Hamisi's condition kept on worsening. Doctors say there is hope for Hamisi's recovery since they have handled more complex cases than his. <laughs> Well, this is not the first case we have worked on of this nature, and we have worked on very complicated cases other than this. So, with our experienced consultants, we have Hamisi, inshallah. We believe everything will go on well. Hamisi is currently admitted at Kibuli Muslim Hospital from where he begins the journey towards regaining his life. All of us here at NTV wish Hamisi the best as he goes through a process of recovery. Let's now take a short break. There is still so much more ahead on NTV Weekend Edition, including... He joined the liberation struggle in the hope of bringing democracy back to Uganda. Tonight, we profile retired Major John Kazora. And in your weekly dose of laughter, we bring Gorilla Moses head to head with Odunga from Busia in the ultimate eating contest. NTV Weekend Edition continues after this short break. See you shortly. Honest is one of the most scary genres of music for me. For me every day.
Welcome back to NTV Weekend Edition. A reminder that in this evening's NTV Weekend poll, we are asking, do you agree with some legislators that the Commission of Inquiry set up to investigate the helicopter crash is not independent? To have your say, text 8778, followed by your name and where you are texting from. Let's take a look at some of your responses so far. We we'll start with Bright Abaho who says, let us not criticize them at this moment. Give them time and see what they will come out with. Begumisa Godfrey says, just like it happened previously, any inquiry set up is always controlled from behind by the higher authority, trying to change the outcome of the inquiry. Francis Atiku says, yes, because how much do they know about aviation? And in any case, why does it have to be the president's brother? Well, thank you so much for all of those responses. We will take a look at some more towards the end of tonight's newscast. Now, moving on, the coming of EDL Fitri this weekend may not come with good spoils for traders, as muted demand and the imminent resumption of the new school term makes the current business climate tough. A visit to Kampala City's two main markets reveals that this time round, customer care and aggressive marketing are the only means for traders to have an edge of their com over their competitors, as Samuel Setumba reports. This is what it takes to get customers today, notwithstanding the fact that this weekend marks the end of the Muslim fasting period that should come with the increased demand as Eid is celebrated. <laughs> The muted demand is made worse by the competition with a tight price undercut. But this woman sells chicken liver and gizzard. And as you can imagine, she's equally unhappy. For some, the hope is that Eid delays by just one day. Notable is that most of these traders were luring the customers to their stalls, a difference from what is known about such days. The lagged effect of the actions of the central bank are still being felt in the general demand regardless of the days. Sam Osetumba, NTV. Thank you, Sam. Jamaican artists Timako and Rain Wonder have arrived in Kampala and will be performing at the KFM's concert tomorrow. The concert will also feature Kenyan artist Matrax as the guest performer, as well as top musicians from Uganda. It is expected to be the show of the year as the two Jamaican dancehall artists perform tomorrow at Lugogo Cricket Oval. Also, 50 Ugandan artists are set to be performing at the concert, promising to bring the week to a close with the Big Bang. The concert is also spiped up, spiced up with a combination of celebrations, which include Monitor's 20th anniversary, KFM being number one radio station, Kipro Teach's Olympic victory, and Uganda's 50th independence anniversary. The concert will start at midday tomorrow. Ordinary tickets will go for 30,000 shillings, while the VIP tickets go for 120,000 shillings. 50 Pioneer buses will be dedicated to transporting people to and from the venue at only 500 shillings. <laughs> This is uh, a KFM concert, and uh, KFM is about entertainment, it's about uh, information. Why are we doing it this year and why are we focusing on, art on, uh, on artists? 
One is a year of Jubilee, and Jubilee is about celebrating 50 years, 50 years of, uh, of Uganda's independence. But not only that, uh, our listeners have been so good to us that uh, right now I can confidently say KFM is by far the number one station. On yeah, well you don't know, this is the democracy, and I want this tree to grow very tall, and I want the people to take care of the tree, because you know what? The tree of life, the tree of life, that's why it have to survive, all right. This tree is the way in one tree and, you know, I just wish prosperity for this tree. And I want this tree to grow and flourish, you know, and love you, love you too, you know. And just let the 50 be, be turn into a 100. So 50 years from now, we see this tree, you know, so well, it was a great movement and we just keep the place green. Okay. You see it? That, okay. Water. Democracy. 50th anniversary mm. for Uganda, 50th anniversary for Jamaica. We have so much in common. We're so happy to be here. This is Brad Ellis from Caribbean Entertainment. Chicken who works with Wayne Wonder. Yeah, and you don't know, Africa is nice. Don't know, Jamaica link up. That with Bob Marley, he's saying, bold to the world. Want to make Africa more to the world. So you don't know, chicken keep it real, Africa lacking. You see me? That's my friend Sean right here. Okay. We're all winning on the team, you know what I'm saying? It's just a team we keep rolling, man. Alright? Now he decided to be involved in the liberation struggle in the hope of returning democracy to Uganda. And he joined the Bush War as an act of conscience, driven by a powerful belief that good governance could restore hope to his country. Maurice Acho meets Major John Kazora in this week's profile feature. He would prefer rather calling him a freedom fighter than a soldier for the government that he once served and fought for. This is none other than retired Major John Kazora, born on the 4th of August 1958, Raised up in Rutoma, Kashari, Mbara district, Kazora grew up in a family with strict parents. He had all sorts of uh, chibokos, uh, from uh, a cane made out of uh, a hippo skin or, or uh, a car cable. He attended Mitoma Primary School before joining Nyakasura Secondary School for his O and A level, another school that he says groomed him. And mark you, it is called Nyakasura School. If you want to offend an alumni of Nyakasura, call Nyakasura Secondary School. It's, it's a crime. At Nyakasura, he attended school with some of the top government officials and those in the army. There was David Tinyafusa. There was Kajara. There was um, Commander Bataringaya. Uh, After secondary school, he joined Makare University where he pursued a bachelor's degree in political science. While there, he was voted the chair of Nkrumah Hall. My predecessor was Stephen Kar uh, Karanjizi, who was a Mnyankore also. Yeah. And then students were saying, but how can two Banyankore successful uh, <laughs> leaders? You are laughing, but it's terrible. At that level, for people to start looking at uh, ethnicity, at tribe, at the region, at the university. Just before graduation in 1982, Kazora and three of his friends set off to the bush as freedom fighters and he narrated to me the ordeal of this very decisive moment. They took all our belongings from us and they put Kavera down and it had rained, it can be wet. And of course, he just slept. Like any parent, Major Kazora's mother received the news of his son's intention of joining a guerrilla warfare as shocking and disturbing. Because I was approaching graduation, I told my mother locked herself in the room and, uh, and started, started crying. The start of the bush war was a nightmare, but the situation got better as time went by. And before he noticed, he had already spent four years in the forest with his commander-in-chief, President Joram Seven. After about two, three weeks, they said, Musea Nakuja, Musea Nakuja. They could not say uh, Seven. He was called Musea. So in the night, he called us. 
After the Bush war that brought President Jerome Seven in power in 1986, Kazoro was posted as the district administrative officer for Western Region and later posted at Jinja Army School. As a political commissar of the School of Infantry, some of our brigadiers uh, and, uh, and colonels and all that, and when we meet, they jack as if they want to salute me. Because at that time I was already a major. One would think that after fighting he was a happy man. I saw I asked him one thing he regrets in his life. The tag of a military rank on my name, it's one I will forever regret. Because when we went to the bush, I went as a freedom fighter, not as a soldier. This didn't stop at that. He was further barred from joining active politics, something that angered him so much. But after succeeding and becoming a member of parliament for Kashari, he finally fell out with President Chair Museven and thus joined the opposition. So they called the leadership of Kashari in Turba Oh yeah. To organize against me yeah. without telling me. I get crushed at the meeting. Yeah. When Gamjira saw me, he was shocked. He almost got a heart attack. And even Museven equally was embarrassed. He said, I'm a puppy that General Munt and Kazora parties, what can they do to me? I, I, I call them here in Rajtura. I give them tea. When they go, they oppose me in parliament. Then I told him that the tea we are taking is not his tea. It is government money, and as a member of parliament, I appropriate money for president's visitor. <laughs> to that effect, he crossed to the Forum for Democratic Change, FDC, led by his co-Bush fighter, retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Basije, who also fell out with President Jerome Seven. As bitterness and anger mounted, Kazora decided to write history in his book titled Betrayed by My Leader. I tried to launch it. Most of these hotels were scared that I could not talk about my life. When I had money to pay for the hotel. So that's how I eventually ended up to Kampala Club, where I have been a member for the last 26 years. What happened on that day? Soldiers came in army uniform and guns and wanted to storm the club, but they were restricted. The book talks about the journey in his life and the regime system in which he served. I have, however, been overwhelmed because I printed 3,000 uh, uh, copies. As we talk now, after two days of the launch, I'm remaining with about 20-something copies. This picture shows him during his first marriage to Grace Camerajo, who unfortunately passed on. He then got married for the second time and now having four children. With the role model in his life as his own mother, he explains how he likes to be remembered. I like to be remembered as a, a simple man who made a moderate contribution to his country uh, and um, mankind, and later was disappointed uh, by my leader. Maurice Chol and TV. Tonight in your weekly dose of laughter, Point Blank, Agnes Nanutu brings us an eating competition between Odunga from Busia District and Kampala's Gola Moses. And a word of warning, if you are eating your dinner right now, you may be about to lose your appetite. Is it yours? Bite off. Hey, hey, hey. I am the man who can just look at the woman and she gets pregnant. Where did you train from? You should leave issues of the generals to the generals. You want another rap? Yeah, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I have granted you free entry into a mouth-watering eating competition between two gentlemen, but please don't salvage too much. Contestant number one is none other than Odunga, all the way from Sia District. And contestant number two is self-made kickboxing champion Gola Moses. He has been defeated in many competitions, but you never know the art of eating may turn out to be his speciality. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah. 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 
Gwana la Moses, without looking at me, are you going to win this eating competition? Yes. Anyway, we are used to your empty promises. Come into the ring, Bwana Odunga. Your competitor, Gwana la Moses, is not a joking subject. Will you manage him in this eating competition? <laughs> you are right. With these three kilograms of posho and beans, I am scared. Gorala, have you seen Odunga's posho, beans and soda? Where is my porridge? Get my porridge, boys. They are very good. I want my two generations of food. It is okay. Come down and we'll embark on action. One, two, three, on your marks. Get set, go! Let the games begin. Odunga, Odunga, all the way from Busia. Odunga with the posho, Odunga with the posho. <laughs> Golola, Golola, Golola with the porridge and the fruits. The eating competition continues. It is becoming tougher. Odunga is doing well. You current man. <laughs> Kickboxing champion is at it. Gorilla with a jug of juice, a basket of fruits, and another one full of eggs. You are indeed a very wise man. <laughs> but this villager, he is sweating with kilos of posho, beans, and Coca Cola. Won't you get a sobaka problem, man? <laughs> Gorola, you don't speak when you're eating. Because when I want to eat, I want to eat. This is not a joking subject. I'll kick someone from here. Don't kick me, Gorola, please. You know what happened to me when you looked at me. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. na. You know what I'm, I'm taking porridge, I'm the happiest man. You remember when I beat this man who took my porridge? It, it was, that was the problem. But don't beat me. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, round one is over. Thank you for coming. Now round two, and this is the final eating competition. <laughs> Odunga's managers have now provided chapati and soda. What kind of diet is this? <laughs> All right, keep it up, man. Ay, 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 ay. Golola is doing well. This is not a joking subject. <laughs> For sure, it is not. With this balanced diet, Golola seems to be enjoying. But my people, I warned you, don't salve <laughs> Odunga is struggling. Cheer up, people. Cheer up for him. <laughs> ha. Ha. I cannot avoid salvating people. <laughs> but for Odunga, mm, 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 mm. though you are good at eating, now, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> an eating competition may not be an Olympic sport, but move over pro teach. For the people of Busia, they have already found their Olympic champion in eating. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the competition is over and Odunga takes the gold medal. Agnes Nandu too. Point blank. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's now take a short break. Joel Kamadi is coming by to bring us the very latest in sport. Good evening, Joel. What do you have for us tonight? Thank you, Josephine. Now, Olympic gold medalist Stephen Kiprotic has today joined the ranks of world renowned footballer David Beckham and former British world record holder Colin Jackson after being appointed ambassador of international inspirations. I'll be giving you more on this. And the NTV Weekend Sports up next. This is 
SNTV. Your Saturday afternoons just got better on NTV with Exposed. Join Cats and the Platinum DJs as they bring you some mad DJ skills and crazy video mixes. You're now rocking with the best. Catch us every Saturday as we live. We'll take you through an experience you'll never forget. Remember to call in with your music requests and also get a chance to win some incredible goodies. That's every Saturday from 1.30pm only on NTV, the station that digs your music. No one feels the motherland like we do. So tune in every day at 6 p.m. and Fridays from 11 p.m. for the best in homegrown music. Only on NTV, the station that celebrates local music talent. know that all music is beautiful and that's why NTV brings you the catalog every day at 2 15 p.m. with the classics on Monday reggae on Tuesday country on Wednesday Africa on Thursday and Love Ballads on Friday. The beautiful sound of music. Welcome to NTV Weekend Sport. I am Joel Kamadi. Now, Olympic gold medalist Stephen Kipro teaches today joined the ranks of world renowned footballer David Beckham and former British world record holder Colin Jackson after being appointed ambassador of International Inspirations, a youth program that is duly funded by the British Council, UNICEF, and UK Sports. He was handed the honor today at British High Commission by the newly designated British High Commissioner Alison Blackburn. Kipro teach will spearhead a number of international projects to inspire the youth in the country in a mission to transform the lives of the youths and children around the world through sports and education the UK government along with its other partners such as UNICEF UK UK sport British Olympic Association and the British Olympic Committee have today appointed Ugandan Olympic gold medal winner Stephen Kiprotich as the new ambassador of international inspiration as part of that very successful games we are absolutely um, delighted to be able to share in Uganda's joy and pride at the um, wonderful success uh, of Stephen Kiprotich. Kiprotich who received this honor from the British High Commissioner designate Alison Blackburn and British Council Program Director Kizo Wandera was accompanied by Penina Kavenge, the Secretary General of the Uganda Olympic Committee and fellow athletes. Uh, thank you very much for supporting our team and uh, I pray that the same spirit continues uh, and also my youth uh, should tell them we work, we work together and bring the spirit of our country. Kiprotich was also treated to a cake cutting ceremony to demonstrate the solid relationship between Uganda and the UK. <laughs> Kiprotich now joins the likes of sports personalities such as David Beckham, Bernice Gray Thompson, the 11th Paralympic gold medal winner, 
and former sprinter Hadler and 13-year world record holder Colin Jackson, who have also served as international inspiration ambassadors. Suhail Mugabe, NTV. Now, in order to discuss the sensational achievements of Olympic champion Stephen Kiprotich and how sports can further be developed here in Uganda, I am joined in the studio tonight by sports analyst Brian Tuka. Warm welcome to NTV Weekend Sport, Brian. Thank you. Now, Brian, there's a lot of excitement about Kiprotich's achievement. Uh, is it deserving for him and all the parties, including government, to react the way they did? Yeah, I think always winners deserve uh, the excitement and uh, whatever goes around. Uh, first of all, the last time I think I was here, I did say would not win anything. And a couple of guys have heard me for that. But this was, th this is a beauty about sports, an element of surprise. But this was beyond a surprise, beyond a shock. Uh, I prefer to call it probably lightning because nobody expected this. Even before I think Kiprotich went on to the uh, marathon uh, to start, nobody expected it. But it, 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 it's deserving. This guy did not win because he was prepared by his country. This guy won because of his heart, because of the effort he did put in. This is a personal medal. Other, rather than the other people you can talk about who've won medals at the Olympics, you can't say they were offered help, they were given right preparations. This is Kiprotichi's medal, personal medal for me, but one for his country. So I think the excitement, worth it, but this is just the starting point. Can it go on? That's a big question now. Okay, but now related to that, government and, and corporates are giving a lot of support to sport at all levels. What do you think? Are they living up to their word in terms of pledges? Uh, for me, uh, shocking, but I'm not excited about any of these things, first of all. This is too plastic for me. Uh, I think uh, we've got to think broader than this. If this country is going to go anywhere further than this in terms of medals. I mean, the Kenyans won 10 medals. They put up a commission of inquiry. And the whole country comes to stand still just because of one medal. Yes, I mean, you deserve to be excited about it. But is this what we deserve out of the 33 million? Out of approximately 5 million, I know, that can do a good job, like Kiprotich, like Kipsiro, like Nzuko, because, I mean, the first person to win the medal after 96 was Dokas Nzuko, followed Kipsiro, now Kip Kiprotich. What, there's something common amongst these names. There's a region where these people come from. What is government waiting for? To go and look for more. So clearly, I feel they need to do more. I did, I've said this and I'll say it again. Government pick interest in sports. When you pick interest in sports, it's good enough. They will know what to do. They will know how to prepare athletes. They will know what to do for sports. At this moment, we've got very incompetent people in charge of sports federations. We've got a very incompetent sports minister for me. I mean, nothing can go on until you pick interest and know the right plan. Now, if Kriptotich has given us a goal without preparation, just imagine if we put in 50% of the preparation, what would we win? Probably would have more than even five medals. So, government, pick interest, know what to do with the sports guys, then we can go and actually use the Kriptotichis, use the Kipsiros, use the Dokas and Zukurus, talk to them, tell them how we can help. If that truck is built, that is a, another starting point for me. That is the real starting point for me. And it can be done. There's a lot of money in this country. Why can they help sports? Okay, Brian, uh, Uganda as a country has no comparative advantage to the likes of America, China, Jamaica. What would it uh, take for us to get there? The starting point is interest. I'll tell you, the British, I think, if I'm not mistaken, won one gold medal in 96. When you look at the, the evaluation, actually, of each gold medal is about 10 million pounds. Now, we don't have 10 million pounds to spend, but we can pick a leaf. Apart from these guys organizing, of course, the London 2012, they really wanted to make a huge statement in the world of sport, which they did do. Now, what can we do? If you pick interest, just a slight right preparation, without even using a lot of money, we can move the right way. Okay, but well, let me just cut you short a bit. Uh, let me just ask you one final question because we're out of time. Mm -hmm. Now, assuming you're head of government business, what would you do in addition to what is being done to make sport uh, more vibrant at the national and international level? Pick the right people to run sports, period. They will know what to do. All right, thanks, Brian. Okay. I have been speaking to Brian Tuka, sports analyst. Now moving on across the globe, and a team of young baseball players from Uganda made history today as they were the first African team to compete in the Little League Baseball World Series, series in Pennsylvania. And they were given a huge welcome. The games, which take place between the 16th and 26th of this month, will also be broadcast live and watched by millions on ABC and ESPN in the United States. A team of 11-year-old baseball players from Kampala has made it to the Baseball Little League World Series and has traveled all the way to the United States to participate in the competition. 
The Ugandan team is the first ever African team to make it to the World Series and played its first game today in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. The Little League World Series is an annual event attended by thousands from around the world. Unlike American and other international teams that have the benefit of having their family members watch them play live and cheer for them, the Ugandan team will not have their family members in the stadium to watch them play. This place is better than ours in Uganda. Yeah, yeah the climate is good, the compound is clean, people are friendly. Now elite football clubs in Uganda have resolved to form a new league titled the FUFA Premier League to be incorporated and entrusted by the national football governing body to manage and run the activities. Some club officials however say the exercise is a result of deceitful acts by selfish persons from the federation as Alfred Dong reports. Take it from us that the mandate to run the league is no longer with the ESL, the mandate to run the league is with this. 14 of the 16 Uganda Super League clubs are said to have resolved to have the league named FUFA Premier League starting with the 2012-2013 season. The clubs excluding Sports Club Villa and Uganda Revenue Authority have been given the mandate by the National Football Governing Body FUFA to run the country's elite competition. Uganda Revenue Authority however not yet decided on where to fall while Sports Club Villa chairman Fred Muema says the ongoing process is illegal. Many were told to sign uh, because they were told it's a directive from FIFA. Some were told uh, even Vida has signed. Uh, you know, it, somehow there was some deceit. So we know the agenda is to create a parallel league similar to that. But anybody who's going to play association football under FIFA and under FUFA has to be in this arrangement. The said clubs agree to have the new body incorporated before the FUFA assembly sits next weekend to pass the proposed amendments and endorse the new changes in football management in the country. We have married company law with football law to make sure that they, 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 they work in tandem. As opposed to before when people are saying, for us we are a company, we don't adhere to football rules, for us we are a company. <coughs> With about one month left to the start of the 2012-2013 Uganda Super League season, there is already suspicion between the Uganda Super League managers and the national football governing body. This is casting doubt that the league may not kick off as scheduled on the 14th of next month. Alfred Odong, NTV Sport. Now finally in NTV Weekend Sport, a team of 32 players, both boys and girls, will represent Uganda in the Africa Under-20 Rising Football Stars to be held in Nairobi from this Sunday to Friday next week. The youngsters and officials are positive of their chances in the Pan-African event aimed at identifying and nurturing talent for elite clubs and national teams. The girls and boys are targeting a top finish which will guarantee them a variety of prizes, winners to receive a wildcard invitation to the Arsenal and Manchester United soccer clinics. And you are going to compete. You are not going to participate, but you are going to compete with other teams. And we, ah, we are strong enough, and we trained for a long time, and we hope for a win. Maybe uh, the goalkeeping department is slightly sluggish that we have to work upon, and the flanks, the midfield flanks, that's left and right. We have to try to strengthen and point that one. <laughs> Did you have a good picture with the, the lady captain? She seems not to be a copy. Check again. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that. And that winds up NTV Weekend Sport tonight. Back to you, Josephine. Thank you, Joe. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Know that all music is beautiful, and that's why MTV brings you the catalog every day at 2:15 p.m. with the classics on Monday, reggae on Tuesday,
country on Wednesday. Africa on Thursday. And Love Ballads on Friday. The beautiful sound of music only on NTV, your official music station. We know that all music is beautiful, and that's why NTV brings you the catalogue. Every day at 2.15 p.m. with the classics on Monday, reggae on Tuesday, Country on Wednesday, Africa on Thursday, Thank you for staying with us. Let's take you back to tonight's NTV Weekend Poll where we asked you, do you agree with some legislators that the Commission of Inquiry set up to investigate the helicopter crash is not independent? Well, thank you so much for all of your responses. Let's take a look at some more. Ali Kaveri says, even if it is instituted, it will not add value and it will again be wastage of taxpayers' money and besides, we don't see the reports at the end of the investigations. Maureen Chirunji says, yes, we are talking about people's lives here. It concerns us all as Ugandans. Obed Biamukama says, don't you know how the government treats army issues? That commission can never be independent because government wants that handled secretly. And Jeremy Otuke says, stories will always be made up in this nation. There is nothing like independence. How do three choppers crash at once? Well, thank you so much for all of your responses and they bring us to the end of NTV Weekend Edition for tonight. I am Josephine Karunji wishing you all a wonderful weekend. We know that all music is beautiful, and that's why NTV brings you the catalogue. Every day at 2.15pm with the classics on Monday. <laughs>